feel so old talking about, you know, old school Nico Nico Duca in like 2007. Yeah. <laughs> We're old. <laughs> Looking up these, these, these Vocaloid videos, waiting 30 minutes for them to load. I still had dial up. Watching anime illegally on YouTube in, in three increments. Parts. Yeah. <laughs> waiting an hour and a half for them to load all the way so you could watch them too. Yep. Oh, we have people now. We have a people. Oh no, Is now we have two people. Hi, Stan. A whole two people. A whole two people. Or I don't know, they might be half a people. Hmm. Hmm. Alright, well, let's go ahead and get started. Wow. <laughs> Same though. All right. I actually, we... <laughs> I made sure to eat before the stream this time instead of letting <laughs> the food stare at me for lonely from across the room. <laughs> Did we go into the third one? I can't recall. Oh god, it was a whole week ago. I don't remember. Um, I feel like we did because oh, maybe not. Where? Oh yeah, we did. Yeah. Nom, 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 nom. Oh right, the flashback. Oh, I am. I'm sorry for thinking you might have been a people, Stan. That was very rude of me. <laughs> Do we go back to one of these? Oh, we can leave. Oh, that's new. I don't remember this. No, two effects available, it says. <laughs> use, misuse. <laughs> ah. Oh, I already know what kind of puzzle this is going to be. This is going to be... <laughs> what? What? It, it's just one of those ones where you're going to have to logic out how you get in a very specific spot. Oh, I hate those. I'm not good at those. Ah, we got candy! Hey, candy! Lemon flavored. I eat the- oh. Delicious. I eat the candy. It tastes like chicken soup. Yeah. That's absolutely how that works. Mm-hmm. Questioning mirror. Uh, Mesolithic, Paleolithic, Neolithic. I want to. Oh God, this it's one of the first two. Mesolithic. <laughs> uh, oh, what happened? I said, "Fuck, I don't know." Mesolithic. Mes mes Damn it. Hi, Eva. Actually, you arrived just on time. We only just started like a minute ago, so you're good. We're already fucking up the puzzles, don't worry. It's fine. Oh! No! Oh, no! That, no, it's not fine. We lied. Now we don't have any tasks, so we're just kind of dicking around, I guess. I, yeah, I think I think that was the point that we were here to kill time to run around. <laughs> mm. 
Yay! Yay! Let's save. Ah! Shit! Why did it take us back? Oh, did we get back? Seems so. Hmm. I wake up to someone opening the door. Hmm? Oh, so you were here. As I thought. It was weird that you never appeared after your class. Where did you get the keys? Surprisingly, all the doors opened for me. Ha! <laughs> I expected from God. Is something wrong? No, why? You're crying. Oh. <laughs> I must have startled you. Huh? Ah, uh, why is it, I wonder? Maybe I'm just a little tired. Here. The boy stretches out his hand with a paper tissue in it. I felt red flowers blooming on my hands as I wiped my cheeks. Hmm. That's a pretty picture. But, uh, probably not normal. implying very nice things. That's normal. <laughs> The wounds are healing? Thank you, C, for coming to help. You're welcome. You should go ahead of me. There's something I need to take. Uh, Alright, take care. Who? Who's that? I think that's Bell. Oh. oh, yeah. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> Can't you be more gentle? Stop complaining when this wound is your fault to begin with. Save me from this monster, human maggot. This monster is the one saving you right now, Bennett. Ugh, can you imagine? This specimen on my table got bitten by a mutant spider, and now he's doomed to have his leg covered in necrosis bites. Hello, oh. Sherb. Aren't you going to treat it? If you're going to blabber, I'm going to amputate it. <laughs> God, I love Felix. <laughs> he's amazing. <laughs> I love him too. But it's just a bite. Not to interrupt, but does that mean there are spiders in the house? Ah, uh, that. One of our workers accidentally broke the glass of a mutant terrarium, so we're still dealing with the consequences. Mm -hmm, but worry not, it should be clean by now. Hello, Vivi! I think. <laughs> Please don't move so much. Ugh. But it's itchy. <laughs> I'll stab you with a fork if you do. <laughs> yes, sir. 
<laughs> These two are great. Hello, Aiden. Are you busy? Good day. There's a dress I've made in collaboration with Henry. We call it Dark Matter Dress, although the amount of actual dark matter in it is non-existent. Want to try it on? Sure. It takes any form you want it to take. Pretty handy, right? For now, it changes only the shape, but we're looking for a way to make it change its structure as well. A pair of extra hands or a particle bomb spawned from clothing wouldn't be so bad, right? I dig it. <laughs> I guess so. It's cool. You can have it. Thank you, Aiden. I'll cherish it. <laughs> Should we do it? Let's see what happens. Yes. Oh. I was expecting death. Right. <laughs> How are all you folks in the chat doing? Dr. Huxley cuts the body on his table in half. Oops! Missed the main membrane over here. Hello, little Charlotte. Would you mind helping me for a bit? Sure, Dr. Huxley. What is it? I need, I need you to carry this to the morgue room. My dear crew members will hate you. Two crew members turn up. Baldwin and Goodwin. As told by their name badges. They greet me in unison. Alright. Inform me if the corpse starts moving on your way. Uh, yeah, sure. Yes, sir. Okay. What do their little profiles look like? <laughs> Aww. Cute. It's rare to see workers in the library. Aww. Hi. Hello, Florence. You look pretty today. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for helping me the other day. I brought something in return. Florence brings out a small cube. Oh man, I uh... <laughs> I misread that for a second. I thought it said a small dude. <laughs> <laughs> a small one for your pockets. <laughs> he is a nice dude. He will talk to you when you're lonely. A good dude. It's my Bennett blackmail logs. Oh. I extracted some memories from his brain while he was asleep. Man, he really should cut down on the soap. It makes him so hyperactive he sleeps like a log afterwards. 
I've already made the spare copies of this, so perhaps one of these cubes will be useful to you. Acquired Bennett's memory cube. Thank you, but... Won't you have trouble sleeping when Bennett finds out? <laughs> he can come fight me anytime. <laughs> <laughs> Good person. I like her. Where is the morgue? Holy shit. It's in the toilet. Oh, that makes sense. If we're gonna have a a bunch of these, I feel like the robot voice is gonna kill the mood. Yeah, uh, I was like, I'm gonna change his voice. <laughs> should I change his voice, guys, or should I keep the robot voice? <laughs> All right. For this change, okay. <laughs> we have a, do we have a tie? Mm, it, it yeah, it looks that way. <laughs> 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 okay. How about compromising for this part only? Okay. Mm, let's see. What should I give him then? He seems like well. Okay. Afterwards, he seemed pretty hyperactive and excitable, but. I get a feeling he's probably not going to be very much like that in this memory. Hmm. Hmm. I don't have a lot of male voices. Hmm. <laughs> the planet I was born on had two races living on it. Humans and overmen. We looked the same, yet our roles in society were completely different. I was born as a designer baby in the laboratory of human resources. A bee type, born to live on nutritional soap as lab rat for testing cosmetics. All for the sole purpose of a sticker saying, Safe for skin, approved by a leading dermatologist, on a tiny tube of cream. Well, that's upsetting. Mm-hmm. A-types are the smart ones. They were fated to participate in an intelligence test, and surprisingly, parapsychology. We had this Paul guy appearing on the TV all the time, predicting match results and making weather forecasts. He died of overworking. B-types are good-looking and have good stamina. They're used in commercials, the movie industry, and medical tests. C-types are the living stock. They're used for mass-producing meat products and candles. Pieces of clothing, sometimes, but it's banned in most area thanks to some activists. Ooh. D-types are the workforce. They're sent to the most dangerous places like nuclear stations, mine shafts, and such. Then there are the E-types. 
who are used as pets. In our department, a special achievement system was developed for us to stay motivated. We all collected MP, which stands for Motivation Points. MP could be traded for rewards and eventually a promotion to a higher rank. The goals were simple. Tough one, smile when it hurts. 10 smiles out of 60 collected. Best buddy, if your friend is feeling ill, report immediately. Five reports out of 10 collected. After somebody was reported, they never came back. I collected the most MP I could. I wanted to get out, be among A-types, and the promotion day came. When I moved to the other department, I didn't have to test cosmetics anymore. I was to become a test subject for medicine instead. To, purposely, to be purposely infected with a skin disease and have all kinds of treatment tested on me. My hair fell out. It grew back. My bowls were f bowels were full of ulcers after I took an experimental drug. They were restored. I vomited and vomited and vomited all the food turning sour in my mouth. It felt like my insides would come out through my esophagus. Rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. Over and over and over and over and over and over and over! One day, I was accidentally infected with eye plague. An incurable illness that made eyes grow on both the skin and internal organs of the infected. Naturally, I was scheduled for disposal. I spent a month in isolation, thinking it was the happiest time in my life. The disposal day came. A person in a lab coat came in, looking too young to be an executioner. Hi there. Nice to meet you. I'm Henry Huxley. I know your schedule for disposal, which, by a lucky coincidence, is today. But it's been cancelled just an hour ago. Just when I signed papers for your ownership. Sounds better than dying, doesn't it? I'd be rather dead, Mr. Huxley. Haha! <laughs> Is that sarcasm I'm hearing? Ah, yes. They must have stopped giving you intellect suppressants. For they are not cheap. It would be such a waste to give them to a defective specimen, am I right? You know... I'm researching eye plague. Yes, yes, the incurable eye plague. Which I am going to cure. And you, my dear, are going to become the face of my success. You see, it's the first time a B-type got infected. You're too valuable of material. And it's a fact that your specimen are most beautiful of all types, as you're constantly used in commercials. So wouldn't it be an exaggeration if I said that you were chosen for, for a pretty face? And timing. Timing was also crucial. Just recently, I've realized that I have less than half a year to complete my thesis. And that is a little troubling. You madman. Yes, I am. Worry not. We'll become the stars of the modern time. Science bless us. 
That meeting marked the beginning of our alliance, and people started dying in the name of science. <laughs> Huxley's utter lack of empathy for both overmen and men alike was the exact reason he was the most successful among his peers. He brought me different books. One of them was Dummy's Guide to Cooking. A good part of it was dedicated to cooking meat. If an animal dies in distress, its meat will be hard to chew, it said. Aside from regular intakes of soap, my diet consisted primarily of various greens and products high in protein, meat included. One day, I decided to ask, what kind of meat is this? I inquired of Huxley, who was vigorously waving his hands in the air. As I'd learned later, he was using a VR environment to work. Of C type of your kind, I believe. He answered, not turning away from my work. The greatest delicacy of our time. Truly a feast of God. Feel like vomiting yet? He added, genuinely curious. No. I took another bite. Nom nom nom. The meat was incredibly tough. Huxley brought me books and taught me reading and writing. He regularly tested my physical capabilities, so I was kept in good physical form. He talked too much. Spent more time with me than he should have. The day Henry Huxley cured eye plague was the day he told me to get into a body bag and declared me dead to the whole scientist society. What's happening? I asked. We're leaving, was his short answer. As it turned out later, researching eye plague was just a facade. What Henry Huxley was actually testing were the capabilities of a human specimen, specimen, only to confirm that men and overmen were no different from each other all along. As we boarded his spaceship, he began quickly explaining that we are a threat to society, that he found the cure from eye plague long ago, and now he only used it as an excuse for doing other projects. That we need to find a new home. We printed all the money we needed to the day we arrived in the house. And that's how we ended up living here. Hmm. Well then. I ship them. <laughs> little, little, little teary eyed over there. Mm hmm. No. No? No. Are you sleepy yet? <laughs> I'm not sleepy yet. <laughs> no. So are you going to keep the robot voice? Um, yeah, for afterwards. <laughs> so where is this morgue? Nah, we already read that. <laughs> ah. Ah, there we go. All done. Yay! Bye bye, Charlotte Wiltshire. That was uncomfortably polite. Bye bye, you two. The workers leave shortly after returning to work.
Anything else to say? No, he's gone. He's gone. Ah. Uh. When I close my eyes, I feel someone's presence beside my bed. It's a man in a pitch black three piece smiling ever so eerily. Father? No, it can't be. Father wouldn't visit me on his own accord. Right, Umbrella Man? Dad? I hear voices. Dad, are you here? No, this is the bedroom. Bathroom. Uh, uh. Look back, back, back. Daddy? Uh, fuck. You in here? Seem to be somehow connected to the nationwide pandemic. Where the pandemic. heck are you? We've received reports that victims afflicted with the infection show signs nearby. of increased aggression and... Get everybody out of here now. There's a gas leak. Hey, there seems to be some commotion coming Let from... Get the hell out of here, bro! Uh, what was that? 